Hi there marketing research students and SPSS users. Today we're going to be using the craft beer marketing data set that we've been using previously to learn about the relationship between independent sample t-tests and multiple regression. Now to understand this video I'm going to presume that you already know how to recode into new variables using SPSS. Previous videos have shown us how to do this. You already can also run and interpret a basic independent sample t-test using SPSS. And again, another previous video has already talked about this. The research question we're going to be studying to illustrate this example comparing regression and independent sample t-tests is the following. Do men report having higher subjective knowledge about beer than women? You should recognize that this is the type of question that you can study using an independent sample t-test because we have two independent groups, men and women, and we have a continuous variable of which we're going to take the mean of, subjective knowledge about beer, and compare those mean differences uh, between the two groups. We're going to investigate this question using two statistical procedures. We'll use the independent sample t-test, and then we're going to do this study again, uh, analysis again, except using linear regression. What we're going to learn doing this, we're going to find out that these tests are actually generating the exact same result. This will give us a more complete understanding of what regression is all about. So we are now inside SPSS and using our craft beer data set. <clears throat> and we are, before we get started, we're going to need to recode our gender variable. Our gender recode variable right now actually doesn't have just males and females, actually has a third category, other or refuse. In this particular example, we only want to study those people who clearly indicated themselves as males or females. They're currently coded as one and two. We're going to code them a little differently though. Males will be coded as one and females will be coded as a zero. This is called dummy coding system, where you use ones and zeros in a single column of data. You should remember that we can do this easily using recoding into different variables. So we need to transform, recode into different variables. We will select our gender recode variable, make a new variable called gender dummy. Hit change. Old and new values. So let's see, if males are one, they'll stay as a one. If the value of two is an old value, which is females, we're now going to code them as zeros. And since it's a nominal data, we can code them the any numerical system we want, but we'll see in a second why ones and zeros are particularly useful. Now for all other values, which include threes, the others, or already missing values, we will simply have these values stored as system missing in this new coding scheme. Therefore, we only have three possibilities. We either have missing data, ones which mean male, zero which mean female. Okay, we can go ahead and run this. And our output syntax says we ran something and there's no errors, so we should be good to go. Okay, now let's first conduct our independent samples t-test comparing these two groups. We go to analyze, compare means, independent samples t-test. I'll hit reset here, clean this out. Sorry, I was doing a previous analysis. We'll grab our new gender dummy variable. We'll define our groups. Uh, we believe that it's likely that males report themselves of having more subjective knowledge about beer uh, than women report their subjective knowledge about beer. So we'll do group one is male, group two is zero, indicating females. We just recoded them as zeros. Therefore, we're taking males, average of males, minus the average of females. And our test variable is our subjective knowledge uh, average question. So we have that test variable here at the bottom. You can toggle between the variable names and variable labels with right clicking if you were trying to look for it. For options, we'll keep our confidence interval at 95, and we will go ahead and run our analysis. Here's our results. Our results are the following. We see that on average, males, coded as ones, scored a 3.6 out of 5. And women on average scored a 3.03 out of 5 potential points, 1 to 5. So sure enough, males do score higher. Then we look down here in an independent samples test. We know that from a previous video, that we should be interpreting, in this particular case, the equal variances assumed based on Levine's test for the quality of variances. So we'll look at this top row here. I want to draw your attention to a few things. Here's our Z value right here. We have a large sample, so we can treat this as a Z value. It's above 1.96, so it's significant at the 95% level. Here's our P value. Again, it's less than 0.05, so it's significant. And our 95% confidence interval of the difference, the lower to upper boundary, does not contain zero, so we are ensured 95% confident that there's a difference between these two groups. And here we see the mean difference. Simply, the mean of males minus the mean of females is 6.4. I'm sorry, 0.64.
Next, we're going to run this similar analysis, but we're going to use regression. You may not have done regression before, at least in my class, so I'll move a little slower. We will go to Analyze, down to Regression, and we'll be selecting Linear Regression. Linear Regression it allows for both nominal and continuous independent variables, but our dependent variable should be a continuous variable. There's additional assumptions. For now, we're going to ignore those issues. Here's our pane. We're only going to need to worry about the dependent area and the independent area. In this case, we're trying to predict subjective knowledge. So that's our dependent variable. Our independent variable will be our new gender dummy variable. Now, because it's coded using a 1 and 0 scheme, or most, most importantly, there's only two possible categories for this nominal variable, males or females, we can drop it right into our independent variable section here. We could not use our original gender recode variable because it was a nominal variable with three categories, male, female, and other. We would have to recode the variable in a different way to set up and import it into uh, linear regression. We can talk about that in another video. But for now, knowing that we only have two potential groups in our nominal category, we know we can bring this into our regression model as it is. For our statistics, for now, I'm going to ignore model fit. It's very important, but for our particular exercise here, we can ignore it. And I'm going to ask for a confidence interval at 95% level. We can hit continue. There's no other settings that we need to tweak at this time. I'm going to head, go ahead and hit OK and run this analysis. Here's my results, and here's my coefficients table. Here we have our independent sample t-test results and our regression results presented together. Remember, we can recall from the independent sample t-test that we actually have a significant result, and specifically the mean difference of 0.6 4, 1, 1, 1 is statistically significant at the 95% level. And that's what the independent sample t-test says. When we look at the regression results down here, we see what looks like to be something totally different. We see two different rows, one being the constant with a beta of 3.037, and then the gender dummy code with a value of 0.641. We go a little further to the right here, we see that, the, again, the z-value, because we have such a large sample, of the gender dummy variable is 4.198, which means it is significant at the 95% level. The p-value here, again, confirms it's significant at the 95% level. And the lower and upper bound of the estimate is between 0 0.340 and 0.943. A few things should jump out at you. The z-value right here is the exact same z-value we see down here for the gender dummy variable. Similarly, the confidence interval, 0.339 and 0.942, are the exact same values we see down here, notwithstanding some differences in rounding of the values. So what's really going on? Well, when we remember what a regression equation is, we can recall that simply the y, which is our dependent variable, equal to some constant plus the slope of our independent variable plus some remaining error. In our particular case, this bivariate regression equation, and bivariate meaning we have one dependent variable and only one independent variable, bivariate meaning two. Our dependent variable subjective knowledge is equal to the intercept, that's our C, plus the beta one, the slope of gender plus error. Let's see where we can plug these values in as we work. So, based on this equation I'm looking up top here, we can say that subjective knowledge is equal to our intercept, which is 3.037 plus the slope 0 0.641 of gender plus error, which for now we will be ignoring. Okay. 
Now, there's one more thing we need to keep in mind. Recall that males are coded as one, females are coded as zero. We know this because we coded this data to mean to be exactly the following. Let's take advantage of this information. Now that we have a math equation here, for now we'll ignore error. And let's solve this equation for two scenarios. Let's first solve it for males. Well, if there's male, if they are a male, they're coded as a one. So when we see gender here, we code this as a one, which equals 3.037 plus 0.641, which equals, and I'll leave that hanging for a moment. Next, we can solve this again, but in this case, let's solve it for women. But women are not coded as one, they're coded as zero. And of course, zero times 0 0.641 simply cancels out. So we know that in this particular case, our estimate would be 3.037. See how by using the zero coding for women in this particular case means that the intercept is simply our prediction for women, 3.037? Hmm. This is interesting and important. Now, when we solve the, the male equation, 3.037 plus 0.641, receive a value of 3.678. Where have we seen these values before? Let's go back to our SPSS output to see where we've seen these values previously. Let's go check our independent sample t-test results again. Look at the group statistic values. For males, gender dummy coded as ones, they had a mean estimate of 3.6779. And women had a mean of 3.0368. Those mean values for males and females are the exact same predicted values that we derived from our regression equation. By plugging in, after solving the equation, we plugged in the codes of 1 and 0 corresponding to males and females to derive the average values. So that's why our z values here for the regression is exactly the same as our z value up here, because the independent sample t-test compares the estimated means between males minus females. And sure enough, our gender dummy code being coded as a 1 and 0 is also reporting the exact same thing. See how it's a difference of 0.641? That's the exact same mean difference as we had when we did the independent sample t-test. What principle can we take away from this? Well, it turns out that the independent sample t-test is really just a tiny subset of the things that linear regression can do. The independent sample t-test is a very specific test that allows us to compare mean differences between two groups on a single continuous variable. Linear regression can do that, plus many other things. So it should be no surprise that we are able to replicate the results of an independent sample t-test using linear regression.